In this video, I'm going to be reviewing and demonstrating the Baby Locker Claim Serger, also known as an overlocker. I'm so excited to be making this video all about your Baby Lock Acclaim Serger, otherwise known as a overlocker. So I'm gonna be going through a complete walkthrough of your overlocker, going through all the accessories that come with it, going through the different stitches that you can make, and really just giving you a really thorough understanding about how to get the most from this machine. Now this video is sponsored by Baby Lock Australia. I encourage you to head to their website to get all the latest information on what models are available, as well as accessories, and where you can find your nearest dealer to get your hands on one of these awesome machines. I also encourage you to check out the Sewing Corner, which is my exclusive membership where I share tips and tricks every month, as well as teach you how to be the best sewer you can be. I was lucky enough to get my Acclaim for Christmas, so I've had it for a couple of months now, and it's given me a really great opportunity to have a really good play with it and find out all the different ins and outs of this machine. So I'm really excited to be taking you through each bit of that and making sure that you really understand how to use this. So to start with, I'm gonna go through an overview of what comes out of the box, just so that you, may, you can make sure you've got everything that you need. And then from there, we'll go into how to care for it, what stitches it does, how to thread the needles, how to thread the machine, any sort of minor troubleshooting that you might have and just really give a good idea. So let's take a look at what comes out of the box. When you first open your machine, other than obviously, hopefully the machine is in the box, these are the accessories that you'll have with your machine. So you have your instruction and reference guide. It's really important to keep this one handy. We're gonna be referencing this quite a bit during this video. There is also the quick reference threading guide. This is another one that I keep really available to be able to look at. Some people will often download the PDF available and laminate it so that they've always got one handy and it's not gonna get you know tea or coffee spilt over it. But this is a really good one to have um, available so that you know how to do quick threading. You should also have a foot control and your power cord. Most baby lock models have the same foot control, so you can the same one for you know your cover stitch or your eight thread if you need to quickly swap between the machines. You should also have your lint brush, which also has a very handy needle insert tool, which I'm going to demonstrate. You should have a package of assorted organ needles. You should only ever be using organ or Schmetz in your machine. I use Schmetz, but I do still have some organ needles as well. You should have an Allen wrench. This is to be able to do um, little maintenance on your machine. Your Allen screwdriver. This is to get your needles out of your machine. A normal screwdriver, a pair of tweezers, very handy to have available and easy to access. The upper cutting blade replacement, the lower looper threading tool. So this is if you ever have any issues threading your lower looper, you might have a bit of lint or thread stuck in there so you can manually thread it as well. Very important to keep this one aside. You should also have four thread nets. This is when using specialty threads or if you find your thread is getting caught. The four thread revolutionary needle threading guide. I will also go through how to use this one. Spool caps, as well as sponge disc caps. The cone holders should be on your machine. A machine cover, and then there's also the packet and the standard machine foot should be on your machine. So that is an overview of all the tools and accessories that you have with your machine when you open it. Next, I'm gonna take you through a closer look at each part of the machine. So first we have the handle and the telescopic antenna and thread guide. One of my favorite things about the thread guide is it has these little brushes which just help the thread come through and help stop any kind of tangles if they come. So I'm a big fan of that addition on the thread guides. Here we have our thread cutter, our presser foot adjusting dial. So that's if you need to address the pressure of your presser foot the needle thread lever. And if you have a look down in closely in here, at the back here, we have our presser foot release lever. So that's to be able to release the feet. From the front here, we have our push to thread needle button. 
this is where the thread guides are for your upper, lower, left, right needles. They come down through here. We also have our presser foot lever here. This here is our stitch selector level, which we'll go through a bit later. You've got your overlock and wave adjuster. In here we have our stitch width adjusting dial, our cutting blade locking dial, and our stitch length slash rolled hem adjusting dial. Also at the bottom you have your needle drop door, which should come in and out, which we'll go into a bit more later. In here you have your needle height viewing area, so you should be able to see that your needles are sitting right in the position they need to be. This is a thread guide so your thread can come around in front and these are your left and right screws for your needles. You also have your side cover which helps house all in here. You have your front cover and your cutting blade cover. You then have your upper looper threading port, your lower looper threading port and your threading lever. So you'll always hit threading when you're doing threading. This is your push to thread button and your upper and lower looper fine tuning knob. You should basically never need to touch this but it's there if you need to know where it is. In here we have our upper looper, subsidiary looper and our lower looper is down in here. On the side here we have our differential feed, our hand wheel that we can use to turn the needles our power cord and our power switch. And up here we have our magnetic needle storage and our accessory compartment with thread stand. Now let's learn how to set up and thread our baby locker clean so we can start sewing. The first thing you need to do is to get your plug and plug it into the machine. You then obviously need to plug it into a power source and you can turn it on. Next you need to raise the telescopic thread guide and you should hear it click into place when the guide is fully locked in place, you should be able to see that the, these little locks click into place. Now that we've got all this set up, we can talk about thread and needles. I wanna make a note that it's really important that you use a quality thread in your baby lock machine. Using a lower quality thread can actually compromise the integrity of the machine as they tend to have more lint, which can get in, caught up in the internals of the machine and just make it run not very nice. So I generally will use a maxi lock or a rasant or rasant. Um, you can also use door tack. I'm a fan of door tack. They're relatively cheaper thread, but not as cheap as something like a birch. So I am using three different colors for this so that we can really have a look at the threads that are going in. But Maxi Lock is probably the number one thread that you can use in your machine. It's quality, it's amazing, it really will make your machine run like a dream. And sometimes you can find if you're getting snapped threads or skipped stitches, sometimes a lot is to do with the thread as well. So changing out to something like a Maxi Lock can help troubleshoot whether it's a thread problem or something else. The other thing I want to talk about is making sure that you use quality needles. So as I've mentioned, it does come with organ needles, but you can also use Schmetz, important to use quality needles. You can use either a 9014 or a 7511. A 9014 is good for almost all general sewing. It's a really great run of the mill needle. A 7511 is if you're having trouble with really fine fabrics such as like a chiffon or a silk, you may want to change to the lighter needle just so you've got a better needle for your fabrics. So we, I have got the 9014s in at the moment and you can use normal sized spool threads as well. So these are the king cones which fit over like this but if you do want to use your normal sized thread spools you can just take off the cone, pop on one of your padded discs, then you can pop your thread over the top and it will just hold it there. With the thread nets, if you are finding that you're having trouble with your thread coming off, you can grab your thread net, pop it over the top, have your thread feeding up the top, and then any additional you can just pop in or tuck in underneath. And then when you use it, you now have a nice smooth threading off your thread. So I've chosen yellow, green, rainbow and blue for mine. So I will have my blue on my left needle, yellow on my right needle. I'm going to do rainbow in my upper looper and I'm going to do green in my lower looper. So I'll bring you in closer and show you how to thread it. To thread your machine, we're going to start with the upper looper. You want to grab your thread, 
bring it up over the top of the telescopic rod, feed it through the little brush guides and bring it back down. You are then going to grab your thread and pop it through till it clicks at the back there and bring it around to the front. As long as your foot presser is up, you will have your tension discs open. So it's really important to have your foot presser up when you're threading, but you just wanna make sure that that is clipped in behind there and then you bring it down to the front. You are then going to open your front cover and your cutting blade cover and you're going to get your threading lever and push it down to threading. From there, you need to turn your hand lever anti-clockwise until you hear the click. And these two are connected, creating an airtight lock so that you can use your air threader. You wanna leave a little bit of thread down into the bottom. Get your thread and thread it into the upper looper threading port, which is marked with a U. Use your finger to push it in a little bit. And then it's just a matter of pushing the thread button and it will pop out here. I'll show you again with a closer look at where the thread comes out at the upper looper. So it's all set up and now I'm gonna push it and out it comes here. All thread ready to go. Now you can leave that as it is and it will pick it up and start sewing. I like to just push it underneath the foot and to the side, but that is personal preference. You can just leave it straight as it is, but now we'll do the lower looper. To thread the lower looper, you're gonna grab your thread, bring it over the telescopic arm and then again, put it through your head thread guide till you hear a click and bring it down the front. You wanna grab your thread and make sure it's thread through the guide here and then pull down about 18 inches or 45 centimeters. And then you can use your tweezers if you're having trouble with your fingers just to pop it into that lower looper port like so. And just make sure there's about an inch in there or two and a half centimeters and then you just want to push your lower the push to thread and it's going to pop out here again i'll show you a close-up so keep your eye here where it's going to pop out and there it is and now the same with your upper loop you can leave it just where it has come out but I like to put mine over the top of the upper looper arm. Very important that it sits over the top and to the side over here. To thread the right needle, we're gonna get our thread, bring it up over the telescopic head, through the thread guide, and then through the head thread guide and to the front. You are then going to take your thread, run it under this thread guide here, through here and around and then behind this thread holder. And then we're going to thread the left and right needle at the same time. So I'm gonna do the same to the left needle and get it to the same position as here, and then we'll thread both needles. I've got my two threads ready to go, and it's a good idea to not have these threads too long. So if you sort of cut them at the edge of your machine, that's a good guide. You then want to bring your revolutionaire air threading arm down and click it into place. And now what you're going to do is get your tweezers. So I'll start with the right needle. All you're going to do is have that thread sitting right in front of the needle and push it, push the push button. And it sucks it in. So I'm going to get my left thread push it to thread. And it will suck it in. So now all you need to do is push the guide up and it brings your threads out here. Again, you can leave them as they are, but old habits die hard with me. And I just like to have all the threads under the presser foot and out to the side. To change the needle, we're actually going to use the lint brush brush that came with the machine. And you'll notice in the end are these two little holes and they are actually your needle remover. So what you do is you pop your needle through that hole. You can sort of put it up there, get your screwdriver 
If you're having trouble getting access to the needles, you can drop the presser foot to give you a little bit more room to access them, but otherwise... Unwind it. And then it just comes out in your lint brush. So now you can put it to the side and do your next one. So again, pop it up, unscrew it, and then it should just drop out. You might need to give it a bit of a wiggle. And there are your needles. To put them in, again, you can insert your needle into the lint brush. It's even got a flat and a curved side so that you can make sure you're inserting it properly. So I'll put, make sure that the flat side is to the back. And then I am inserting it in. You should be able to see the top of the needle hit the top of the shaft in the needle viewing area. So as you'll see, I'll push it up and it's there and then I can tighten it. And once it's tight, I can just let it off my lint brush and it's all inserted. So again, I'll do the same to the other side. So I get my lint brush. There is a curved edge and a flat edge. So I'll make sure that the flat side of my needle is a, to, facing towards the back of the machine. Insert it. You should again be able to see the top of the needle butt up against the shaft here. And then make sure it's all the way up like that. And then you can tighten the screw again and it is good to go. You will notice that the needles are actually different heights. So the one on the left is higher than the one on the right. That is how it's supposed to be. So don't be alarmed if your needles are at different heights. That is intentional. So just make sure they are all the way up in that shaft as I showed and your needles are good to go. If you do happen to drop your needle at all, there is the needle drop drawer, which is down here. So the needle will just fall down here. You can pull it out, it's magnetic, and then you can pull out your needle and put it back in. It's great for if you have a needle that breaks and perhaps the tip just falls down. It just is a great way to make sure that you're not losing any of those pieces. So when you're using your push to thread needle guide, if you're having any additional trouble, you can use your Revolution Air needle threading guide, which is this piece here. It comes in your accessory pack in the side. And what you need to do is clip it onto the shaft of the needle shank guide thread thing here. And what you're going to do is it just gives you a little bit of additional uh, area here to guide your thread through. So you're going to get your thread, you can get it in your tweezers, and then when you pop it in front of your needle eye, you've just got a little bit of extra area to guide you in that. So I'm going to push it. And as you saw, it sucked it straight in. So I'll do it again with the other one. Same thing, I've got my thread ready to go. I'm placing it in front of the needle eye, pushing the button, and it sucks it in like so. So now I can just push my thread guide up, take off my revolutionaire needle threading guide gently so that it doesn't pull the threads out and my machine is ready and threaded. The last thing I wanna show when threading is that the push to thread button has three different modes. So mode one is when you push it once, the threading pump will work. You push the button again and the threading pump will stop. Mode two is when you push the button, the pump will work for three seconds and then stops. And mode three is when you hold the button down, it operates the pump and when you take your finger off, it stops. So by default, it is set to mode one, but you can change it if you want. So to change between the different modes, you need to power switch off, press and hold the push to thread button while you're turning the switch on and holding the button for three seconds. So I'll push it in, turn it on, one, two, three. And now my push to thread should come on for three seconds and then stop. One, two, three. 
So that is mode two. So if I wanna change it to mode three, I'll turn the machine off again, press and hold it while I turn the machine on for three seconds. One, two, three. Now it should only come on while I've got my finger on it. Like so. And to change it back to mode one, I do the same again. So you, it just cycles through the modes one, two, three. You can choose whatever works best for you. If you've been sewing and you wanna change the thread color, you'll need to clear the stitch fingers. Now what I mean by stitch fingers is actually these two fingers or prongs here. And that is what the thread loops around to form the stitch. So if I go slowly, you'll see that it's threading around that and forming the stitch. So to change the thread color, you do have to clear those fingers. So what you need to do is you'll push your presser foot up, you turn your lever, your hand wheel clockwise while pulling gently on the thread. And you should just feel it give way and then you're able to pull your threads out and you can change then you will have clipped your threads so that you can pull them out and re-thread. To finish up all you need to do is flick your thread lever up to surging, your knife cover plate in place and your front cover in place as well. It actually won't start sewing with any of these down, it is a safety mechanism but once they're all up it's okay. Your machine is now thread and you can start sewing. Before I take you through the different stitches of the Acclaim, I am just gonna run over a couple of other features such as the presser foot dial and a couple of other things. So let's have a look at those before we start looking at the stitches. The presser foot pressure has been preset at the factory and very rarely needs adjustment. You may find it necessary every now and then to decrease the pressure for thick fabrics or increase the pressure for thin fabrics to feed more smoothly under the foot. So you just need to turn the presser foot pressure adjustment dial to the left side of the machine. So to increase the pressure, turn the pressure adjusting dial counterclockwise like so, so that it goes up. And to decrease pressure, you turn the dial clockwise down. But as I mentioned, for most fabrics, right in the middle is exactly where it needs to be. If for some reason you don't need your cutting blade, you can turn the cutting blade locking dial to lock. And now your cutter will go into the down position and won't move again. So that is how you get it to lock and to unlock, switch it back and it will start to move again. To change the presser foot, if you wanna perhaps use a clear foot or a blind hand foot or any of the other accessories that come with the Acclaim, all you need to do is click the release button and it will come off so you can change it to re-engage the foot what you need to do is have needles in the highest position place your foot under here line up the little bar that is on the foot with the groove in the bar and then you just kind of wiggle it in and it is all back on the stitch which adjusting dial is located just about above the stitch length dial and the stitch width dial displays two sets of numbers indicating two size ranges. So the larger size numbers on the dial, 5.5 through 27, so the 5.5 through to 7.5, denote the stitch width when the left needle is in use, so 7.5 mil, and the smaller numbers, which are three here up to five, denote the stitch width when only the right needle is in place. So adjusting the stitch width moves the cutting blade, which I'll show here. So you can see as you move it, the cutting blade moves. An average stitch width when you're doing a four thread overlock is kind of between that six and a half and seven width. With the stitch length knob, which is located underneath the stitch width, no stitch width knob, you'll see that there are two stitch ranges, from 0.75 for the shortest, shortest stitch, which is here, and right up to four for the longest stitch. As you can see, there are two size ranges, 
one is for standard sewing and one is for rolled edging or narrow seaming. So you simply turn the dial aligning what number you want with the indicator and a stitch length of about three or about 10 stitches per inch is ideal for seaming and overedging most fabrics. For overedging or seaming very lightweight fabrics, you may prefer a shorter stitch length. And when sewing heavier fabrics, you may choose to lengthen the stitch, but that's just something you can try on each different fabric. The differential feed is located on the right of the machine. Most of your sewing you are gonna do in N or neutral, but it does go all the way up to two and all the way down to point. 0.6. Now what these numbers refer to is actually the feed dogs which are over here and when it is all the way up to a 2 it means that the feed dogs are working on a 2 to 1 ratio. So basically the front feed dog is feeding in twice as much fabric as the back dog is feeding out. This is a really great option if you want to gather on your overlocker you can put it all the way up to 2 and if you put your stitch length all the way up to a four, you will get quite a nice gather. So it is a two to one gather, but you can choose which sort of setting you want and you can have a play with that and how the gathering works on your fabrics. But as I mentioned, most fabrics will be right on an end. It's just if you start coming into fabrics that are starting to get too wavy, either stretching out or pulling in, you can play with this to try and counteract that. The stitch selector controls the thread delivery and is located just above the differential feed. To select a stitch setting, you can move the stitch selector level up from A through to D. And most generally, A is used for wide overlock stitches as it feeds the thread to the left needle. B is when you're using a three thread overlock so that it feeds the thread nicely to the right needle. C is for narrow stitches with a short length and a rolled wave stitch and D is for a three thread rolled hem. The wave and overlock button is here, so most of the time you will sit in overlock, but if you wanna do your wave stitch, you need to make sure you are up on wave, and vice versa, if you want to do overlocking, you need to bring it down to overlock. You'll notice that the claim doesn't have any thread tension dials on the front. Hopefully this is a big reason that you bought this machine. And that is because it has the automatic thread delivery system or the ATD. And this just means you no longer have to manually adjust the tension settings for the type of stitch you're surging. So it is super smart. And what it does, it actually feeds information back from the presser foot up to the tension discs to let the machine know how much thread to push through. And it's one of the reasons why when you actually surge on this machine, it will chain off as it goes. So because it is sending information here as to how much thread to push through, it will chain off on its own. Whereas on a machine with tension settings, what you'll find is it actually bunches the stitches up and you have to pull the thread through to get it to chain. But because it is so perfectly balanced, it will tell the machine exactly what to push out. The other thing I wanna show is the upper and lower loop of fine tuning knob. As I've mentioned with the auto thread delivery, you shouldn't need to touch this because it is all done automatically. But if you do notice that you're getting some looper threads that are too loose or looper threads that are too tight, you can adjust this slightly to fine tune it to get sort of a better stitch. However, most fabrics you shouldn't need to touch this. It is pretty perfect just as it is. We are now ready to start going through all the different stitches that we can make on our machine. I'm gonna start with the most common, which is probably the four thread overlock. So I'll take you through a wide hem as well as a narrow hem and a couple of other features you can do with your four thread, but I'm gonna be using calico as our practice fabric. So let's get started on taking a look at those stitches. To get a perfect four thread overlock stitch, it's suggested that you start with the following settings. So you want your stitch width to be between six and seven and a half. So I'm gonna do sort of a six and a half. Your stitch length to be between two and a half and three and a half. So I'll go three and a half. You'll obviously have your cutter in the up position. We have our wave slash overlock set to overlock. Our stitch selector on A and our differential feed I've got set to neutral and I have my left and right needles in. So I'm gonna grab a piece of fabric. Got my piece of fabric. I'm gonna fold it in half to mimic a seam because you generally are seaming or surging, seaming two pieces together. And I'm just going to run it straight through the machine. And 
as you can see, we have a pretty perfect overlocked edge. So I have my blue on the left, my yellow on the right. The rainbow is the upper thread. So upper is on the upside or top side of the fabric and the green or lower looper is on the bottom. So the lower is the underside of the fabric. So it's a good idea if you're unsure how your tension is to check those things. And you wanna make sure that it is balanced across the top there. So you've got your lower looper sitting basically right on top there. It's not too pulled back. It's not too pulled to the front, but with our baby lock ATD, it will pretty much surge perfectly every single time. So that's a stitch width of six and a half. If we wanted to go up to a seven and a half, I'll do the other side. Then we can see here the difference in the width of the seam. So this was our six and a half mil seam and this is our seven and a half mil. So you can play with how wide or narrow you want your stitch width to be, and it can just depend on what you want. But that is a basic four thread overlock stitch. You can also play with the different stitch lengths. So if you wanted to have a stitch length of two, it will bring the stitches in closer. like so, so that shows that the stitch lengths are closer compared to our three and a half stitch, stitch length of our previous sew. So you can play with the different stitch lengths, but honestly, between a three and a half and a four is pretty standard and will give you a good strength in your garment to hold. Now let's take a look at our three thread overlock. First, we're gonna have a look at the three thread overlock wide. So we need to take out our right needle. So I'm just going to clip my right thread. I'll push my presser foot up and I'm gonna get my needle threader and just so I don't lose it in the machine. While I'm not using my th needle, I am going to pop it in the magnetic plate holder over here so I don't lose it. You don't actually have to tighten the screw back up on the Acclaim models. Um, it is locked in, but out of habit, I do. And then I've clipped it at the top so I can just pull my yellow thread through. I can do a couple of stitches if I want to clear out that yellow and I'm ready to go with my three thread wide. So I'm going to have my stitch width up to seven and a half, my stitch length about a two to three, my stitch selector is on A and I'm on overlock. And now I can run my fabric through. and you'll see that I have a nice wide overlock with just the left needle, my upper looper, and my lower looper. So it just does take out some of the bulk of this four thread, which it might be a bit hard to see in video, but it is just that little bit less bulky than it is with the four thread. To do a three thread overlock narrow, we're going to switch out our left needle this time. So I'll make it in that position, get my needle guide, needle catcher, unlock. So it comes out and then I'm going to just switch it over to the right. So I'll undo the screw, guide it up and lock it in place.
And now because the tension is all automatic through the thread head guide, I can actually just get my blue thread and thread it into my yellow, oh, sorry, into my right needle if I want. So whether or not you wanna use your thread guide or you can also use this manual needle threader so what you this will this comes with the machine so what you'll do is where the arrow is on top you get your thread and run it parallel you might need to give yourself a little bit of thread and then you push it up against the needle apply some light pressure and slide it down the shaft until you hit the eye and it pushes the thread through and then it's got a little hook on the end you can hook your thread and pull it through so that's another way to thread it if you need to but I'm now set for my narrow hem so I've got it in my right position I've got my stitch width on between three and three and a half so I might go three between three and three and a half. My stitch length on two and a half to three and a half, so I'll keep it on what it was before. Your stitch selector for this one should be on B because then it is automating the thread delivery through the right needle. A means that it's coming through the left needle, B is the right needle, so we put it on B before we start overlocking. So now I get my fabric and I can run it through. And as you can see, I have a perfectly balanced, very narrow hem. The next thing we're gonna look at is a rolled hem on our baby lock. And it is by far the most beautiful rolled hem I've ever seen on an overlocker. So a rolled hem is something you would use for something like chiffon, if you're working with chiffon, so those sheer fabrics, or ganza, if you wanted to edge or um, hem the bottom of that. Uh, silks you can use it on. I like to use it when I'm doing little ruffle sleeves on my daughter's dresses. So even on wovens, instead of having to do a narrow hem, I do a beautiful rolled hem and it's just gorgeous. So when I do a rolled hem, I tend to switch out my upper looper for either a maxi lock stretch, which is just a fluffier thread. It helps to fill in the gaps and it looks really beautiful. Or you can use a woolly nylon as well. So I'm going to use a woolly nylon and I'm going to show you how to thread a woolly nylon because it's a little bit harder with the push to thread button for the woolly nylons, but I'll show you how to do that. And then what it does, a woolly nylon is obviously a nylon fabric and it's just a little bit stretchier and a bit fluffier. So it really helps to fill in the gaps on your rolled hem and give you a really beautiful, beautiful finish. So let's take a look at how to do that. So to thread your woolly nylon, you are going to get to threading, obviously. Mine was in the right position to airlock. And then you're going to grab a really long piece of thread, like a 40 centimeter in half, so 80 centimeter piece of thread, because we're going to create a cradle for our woolly nylon. So we're going to stick our bits in our two ends into the upper looper. So you've got the looped bit that is still free. And now I'm going to get my woolly nylon and I'm going to thread it through the normal upper looper path. So I've got my normal, my thread coming through the normal, normal upper looper path. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold on to this looped end, push this to have it come out. So it's come out at the end there. And now I'm going to get my woolly nylon or specialty thread, put it through the cradle. And then I'm going to pull on my two ends here and bring my woolly nylon through. So I have now threaded my woolly nylon and I can do my decorative rolled hem.
So we've got our right needle in, we have our stitch length on the R or the rolled hem. And I like to have it pretty much on the lowest number when I'm doing a rolled hem. My stitch width is on three by the inside number. So it's on three. And my stitch selector is on D. Now I can take my fabric and rolled edge along it. And as you can see, it is such a beautiful rolled hem. I love how the woolly nylon really just fills in the gaps in between the stitches. However, that really depends on the thickness of the thread. So have a play with your rolled hem stitch length just to see how the thread fills it in. But if you also want to have your color on the same, the same as it is on the back, just make sure that you are having the same color on both the upper and lower looper, but it is such a, such a beautiful rolled hem. For this example, I'm going to do a lettuce edge, which is quite popular as a decorative edging for lingerie and children's wear. It's really cute on the edge of like a skirt. So you, you set your machine to a three thread rolled edge, which I've done, and then you're going to set your differential feed down to six. And then you are just going to feed your fabric through and slightly pull it as it goes through. As you see, you get a really cute lettuce edge effect. You can have a play with how sort of leafy you want it to be just by practicing pulling the fabric as you go through, but it's really cute on knits on the edge of baby's wear and skirts just to have that nice little lettuce leaf edge effect. The next stitch we're going to look at is a flat lock stitch. You can do either a three thread or a two thread flat lock stitch. I'm going to show you the two thread way so that I can convert the machine to a two thread, but it works the same with a three thread. I just encourage you to read your manual and you can check out all the settings on that. But let's take a look at the two thread flat lock stitch. To convert to a two thread overlock, you need to get your subsidiary looper from the position here and you're going to pull it to the right, flip it around and it just locks into place on the upper looper. So now that upper looper is locked and we can thread the machine as a two thread machine. I'm now going to switch out my right needle to my left. So I'm just going to use my fingers for this. Pop that in there. And now I'm going to get my need my thread and I'm actually going to pass it through the upper looper tension disc and bring it around here. So I've got it through the upper looper tension disc and then I'm going to thread it 
as per normal. So it's all threaded up. I have got my needle in the left. My stitch length is going to be about a two to two and a half. My stitch width is all the way on seven and a half. My stitch selector is back up to A and I am on overlock. So now I'm going to pop all my guides up and we're going to do two bits of fabric together. So I've got my two bits of fabric and now I just sew. Once you finish sewing, what you're actually going to do is pull your fabric apart. And what it does is this beautiful flat lock stitch. So this is really great if you want to join two pieces of fabric together and you want a flatter seam. You don't want, you know, to show, have that bulky seam edge. So that some people use it for active wear to connect the pieces so they don't have a seam down the side. But you now have your beautiful flat locked two flat, two thread flat lock wide. So while I've got my machine set up for a two thread overlock, I'm actually going to practice the blind hemming or show you the blind hemming. So I've switched my needle over to the right position. I've got my stitch width set to five, which is what the inside number is. I'm going to do a stitch length of about four in the standard range, so up to here. And then I'm also going to put my cutter in the on position. Then we're going to fold our fabric over and have your hem folded back on itself. So this would be the skirt piece or whatever your sewing pants. And then this is the hem that you want. So you'll have the edge that's going to trim off. And now what you want to do when you sew, I'll bring it in a bit closer. You want to align the edge of your hem with either one of these two. So if you want a really narrow blind hem, I would probably align it with the far left one. And then as you sew, you want the needle to just hit on that fabric. So it takes a little bit of getting used to and as you can see here, I actually missed it. But this is where a blind hem foot, which you can get as an accessory, is really great as it helps you work out where your fold in the fabric needs to be. But with a bit of practice, you can get this blind hem really quite invisible. So that is how you do a blind hem. Now we're going to have a look at the wave stitch, which is a really beautiful stitch for this machine. It's a great decorative stitch and a good opportunity to use any decorative threads that you have. So I'll pull out some of my decorative threads and we'll get started on doing some wave stitch, which will give you some beautiful ideas about how you can use it for your sewing as well. So to start with for our wave stitch, I'm going to be doing two different types. I'm going to be doing the three thread wave stitch and the three thread rolled wave stitch. So for the three thread rolled wave stitch, I'm going to be using a woolly nylon in the upper and a woolly nylon in the lower. However, they are just a little bit fancy. So this is just the straight woolly nylon. Um, and what makes woolly nylon different is that it's a textured yarn like thread and it's incredibly soft, but it has such great strength and durability. So it's really great for swimwear, lingerie, dance costumes, children's wear, dress fabrics, like just about anything. So woolly nylon is a really great one to use. We used it earlier 
in our rolled hem and we're going to use it in our wave stitch as well. And the woolly metallic, so this is a woolly nylon thread twisted with a metallic strand. So it's ideal for rolled hems and wave stitch and other decorative um, projects on your overlocker as well. So I'm going to be using that on both. And then for our straight wave stitch, I'm going to be using a cameo and a pearl. So this one is the cameo. So it's a high luster, heavy rayon yarn. Uh, it's used in a lot of bobbin work and cross stitch, um, also obviously overlocking and more. So it has a low twist, giving it a high luster uh, finish. And the thread bulks out after stitching to fill in the gaps between the stitches. So it gives a really full coverage and a decorative edge, st edge stitching and flat lock um, stitching on your sewing machine. So that's a really beautiful one. And this is the Pearl. So it's a high twisted, thicker rayon. Um, it's a really versatile decorative thread that can be used in both your overlocker and your sewing machine. So this is the brand Designer Threads, which is available through the Baby Lock Australia website. So make sure you check them out. There are so many different colors available on these and they're so, so pretty. So well worth checking them out. However, I'm gonna put my woolly nylons aside for now because we're gonna be using our cameo and our pearl for the three thread wave stitch. So I'm gonna get it all set up, all threaded, and then I'll bring you back and show you the settings for the three thread wave stitch. So I've got my threads all loaded up here. So I've got my pearl in the upper looper and it's really important to note that it's actually coming through the right hand needle path. So it is coming through the right hand needle head, head thread guide but it does still go through the upper looper port down here. And then I've got maxi lock swirls in my right needle but it goes through the left needle head thread guide and then comes around to my needle on the right. Just follow your uh, quick reference guide and it will tell you. And then I've got the cameo in my lower looper, which is threaded as per normal. Um, so my settings, I've got it on a wave. I've got it on stitch selector B. My stitch width, I've got as a five and my stitch length, I've got as a one and a half. So let's get started with sewing this one. The other thing I do want to note is that I've actually put my clear foot on now. I actually really like the clear foot. It just helps you see what's coming up underneath. Um, it's, a, it's an accessory that you can buy for your machine. So you just need to head to the Baby Lock Australia website to find the dealer so you can order it. But the clear foot is really great if you want to be looking at what you're doing while you're surging. So I'm going to sew this one and let's see how we go. Look how beautiful our three thread wave stitch is. So that was with the pearl on the upper and the cameo on the looper. So on the back, it is all just the cameo, but on the front, we get this beautiful detail. So one of the reasons that you need to make sure you follow the thread path, as it says, is if you don't, you will actually get um, your wave stitch won't look anything like it's supposed to. So this was the first test I did and I forgot to put the upper looper through the right thread path, uh, head thread path. So it just didn't work at all where it's supposed to look like this. And that's to do with the stitch selector because when you have the stitch selector on B, it um, manages the stitch being thread or the thread th being fed through, a bit of a tongue twister, the right needle. So it's just important that you have that one and you get a beautiful wave stitch like this. So now I'm gonna show you the three thread rolled wave hem. So for my settings, I've got my stitch width on three, I've got my stitch length set on one, and I've got my stitch selector on C, and obviously that is on wave. So now I'm gonna get my fabric and we're gonna stitch along. So 
So here is our three thread rolled wave stitch. So it doesn't look pretty. The metallic woolly nylon doesn't fill in as much as the woolly nylon. So that's just something to be aware of when you're, or if you want to use the metallic woolly nylon. But this is great for if you want to do some edges on flutters or at the edge of a skirt or anything really. You can do some really great decorative things with this. So that is your wave stitch. Definitely have fun with it but I just think it is super cool and super fun. The other one you can do is a three thread reverse wave stitch, but I'm not gonna show you that one because I think these two are pretty good and you can follow the instructions in your book. The last thing I wanna take you through on the action machine is how to give it a good clean. It's really important to clean your overlocker fairly regularly. We've been doing some heavy machining on this with the different stitches. So it's got some nice little bits of fluff and gunk in there. So I'm gonna take you through how to give it a really good clean and make sure you're getting the most out of the machine. So to clean the machine, you can use the lint brush that it comes with, or you can get a slightly bigger one from a lot of different craft stores or places that sell machine accessories. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a really good clean. So it's a good to give it a good brush. We're gonna pull down our covers, really get in there and give it a good clean, really get in there and give it a really good clean. You can clear the stitch fingers. So you can release the threads and then clip them. So you can give it a really good brush in here. Make sure you get rid of all the little thread fluffy bits. Clean out your knife plate cover. And then to make sure you get into the feed dogs and give this plate this a really good clean, what you're gonna do is you're going to get your Allen key that came with it and release this nut at the back here. And then you'll get your need your other screwdriver and release this side. Make sure you're putting your screws in a place you'll find. You can release the presser foot if you want. And then you're just going to lift this up. You can open up the side cover. And then you can really get here in under the feed dogs and give it a really good brush out. So just giving it a good clean. And then to replace it, you're just going to pop it back on top like this. You can pop your side cover back on and then put your screws back in. So my screws are all in now and back on. For the next bit, I am actually going to put the machine on its back. So it's a good idea to make sure it is powered off. So I'm going to very gently flip the machine onto the side or the back so that I have access to this plate on the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is unscrew each of these screws and what happens is the plate comes away and any gunk that's under there will come away as well. While you're here it's a good idea to give these a really good clean. They help to suction your machine to where you are so that it doesn't run away from you. But I'm going to get a screwdriver and we'll be able to undo these screws. So now I can just gently take this off. You might need to undo your side cover. And as you'll see, there is a whole lot of fluff and dust in here that you can take outside and just tap, get your brush as well to just give the final brush. And then you can just give it all a good little brush while it's open and make sure it is working in tip top form. So I've given that a bit of a clean out over my bin so it's looking much, much better. So now I can go ahead and pop it back on my machine. Just lining up all the guides. 
Might need to give it a bit of a wiggle. So that's all back on there. Have one of my little feet pop off. But now we get our screws and put them all back on. And now we can gently lift it back up. Obviously you don't need to do that depth of cleaning every time as in taking out the bottom plate, but depending on how heavy you use the machine, whether you're using it daily, monthly, a couple times a year, just it's a good idea if you know that you've been using it quite a lot or you've been using particularly fluffy or linty fabric, it's a good idea to just give it a really good clean underneath but giving it regular cleans under the needle plate and the thread plate are a really good idea. So it's a good idea just to keep it nice and clean. It's also always a good opportunity to change out your needles. You should be changing your needles every three projects or around eight hours of sewing just so that they're nice and tight and you're not getting any skipped stitches. But generally keeping your machine tidy, um, clean is the best way to keep it healthy and you should be looking at getting it serviced about once a year or every 12 months, again, depending on your usage, but it's a good idea to have it serviced by a proper mechanic so that you're getting the most out of the machine. In terms of my personal review on this machine, I think it is incredible. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend Baby Lock as a company and I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this machine in general. I have had it, as I said, for a couple of months now, it's never once skipped a beat. The automatic thread tension, I think, is a life changer. Just not having to worry about, you know, making my threads right and tension right and getting it right first time every time just saves a lot of time, really, when you're switching between different fabrics. I also like a lot of the features. Like I said, these little um, brushes just on the telescope arm, little things like that, I think, make a difference. Having the push to thread both the upper and lower loopers and the needle threader, I think that's great for people who might struggle to perhaps see the needles. The eye of the needle, that's a really great feature for them to use. But in general, like it's hard to get your little thread in there. So to have the push to thread air threading on the needles is really great as well. Small things like the presser foot height is something that I really enjoy on this machine. It's slightly higher, so I think that just helps when you're working with bulkier fabrics. And just the general machine itself is that bit sturdier, it's it's really heavy duty, it's great to sew on, it goes fast but it's not super loud, I mean it's not super quiet so you know you will have heard throughout the video that it is louder but I don't think it's obviously the loudest on the market but it's definitely not the quietest but you know in general I think it's a great machine and I wish that everybody could have a baby lock. I hope you enjoyed this review Make sure you head to the Baby Lock Australia website to check out your nearest dealer so you can go ahead and see where you can get one from. If you live near a dealer or you're not too far, far from a dealer, it's always a good idea to go and test drive which one you like. I've obviously got the Acclaim, but there are different models as well. The Acclaim comes with a variety of feet as well. So there's a blind hem foot, a clear foot, a Teflon foot the piping feet, which I'm going to demonstrate some of those feet in another video. So when they are done, I'll make sure I link it in the description below. So check the description to see if they are there. Um, but there are quite a few things that you can do with this machine. So if you want to follow me, make sure you're following all my socials. I'll put them up in the screen here. And make sure you check out the sewing corner as well for a really great place to join and connect with other sewers and have me helping you along your sewing journey. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.